So today we are going to discuss the function set state. Okay, so as it is defined, it is a method that is used to rebuild the part of the UI that responds to a stateful widget. Okay, so take note here, it is going to rebuild our UI. Wait. So when you say rebuild the UI, so meaning if ever there will be changes on the values in our UI or whatever, or, or let us say there will be changes on our widgets, so we are going to call set state. Now, so far with our previous example, what we did was um, when we click on the button, we just displayed the inputted values by the user to our snack bar okay so how about if ever we are going to display uh, the inputted values by the user to a text okay or let us say we are going to compute for something we're going to get the sum of two numbers then we are going to display them in a text widget okay so in that way we are going to there will be an update on our UI okay so here we are then going to use set state. Okay, so how it is going to work? Changing state. Okay, when there is a change in internal state, uh, as you could see here, when a variable is updated, we are going to use set state so that it is going to signal flutter that the that state has been changed. Okay, so take note. This is going to tell flutter that the state of the widget has been changed okay then it is possible that it is going to rebuild the widget tree for example if ever we are going to remove some widgets or we are going to add some widgets into the widget tree so again we are going to use the set state okay or ui updates okay so any ui elements that depend on the updated state will be redrawn and updated on the screen Okay, so this would be very much evident with the example that I have uh, mentioned. For example, we are going to get um, the sum of two numbers inputted by the user, then display it on a text widget. So there would be a UI update. Okay, so first, when we are going to use set state, so it is going to tell Flutter that the state has been changed and it could be either rebuild or both maybe both rebuild the widget tree or there will be updates on the ui okay so we are going to have here a very simple example uh we are going to let the user to input two numbers two numbers then compute sum and we are going to display here the sum of the two numbers inputted by the user okay so I have just actually edited uh, the previous example that we have. Okay, so this was the name and the comment. So I changed it to numbers. Okay, so the, I changed the controller to N1 controller for the first text and N2 controller for the second text. Okay, then so we could see it here. I have changed. Uh, the values oh no the name of the controllers here okay and since we are going to get the sum so I'm just going to have here an integer sum is equal to zero okay so I have also declared here a variable sum that is going to contain the sum of the two numbers that is going to be inputted by our user then on the click of a button, it is going to display here the sum of the two numbers. So therefore, we are going to add a text widget below our button. Okay, so we have here our button. Here. We have here our elevated button. So I'm going to have here a size box with a height, let us say 10, a 15. Okay, then a text widget that is going to contain the sum, okay, later on. 
So what should be the string? Okay, so we what we are going to do here is we are going to put here the sum. Okay, that we have declared uh, the integer variable that we have declared on line 30. Okay, so take note, this variable is going to contain the sum, so therefore, that should be the string for our text. Okay, then comma, I'm just going to change the style. Text style uh, for the font size. I'm just going to make the font size bigger. So maybe I'm going to have here 30. Okay. Then comma. But as you could see here, the sum returns an error. Okay. Why? Because the argument type int, integer, can't be assigned to parameter type of a string. Okay. So take note that I have defined my sum as integer. But text requires a string so therefore it returns an error so what are we going to do here actually there are two possible ways on how are we going to solve this one so we could have we are going to convert the integer into a string okay or we could actually use a string interpolation method in which we are going to have here the sum is then the string interpolator interpolator okay then like that okay so it's as a way we have converted the sum or the integer into a string but in my case here today in my example here i'm just going to use the two string method okay then save and reload okay so as you could see here we have now zero which contains our uh, the sum supposedly okay so when the, the user is going to input here five and six and when we are going to click on compute sum it should display here the sum of the two numbers okay so we are going to define our method here on the on pressed method okay so first is we are going to get i'm just going to declare here a variable named x for the first number our first number we have assigned the n1 controller for our first number so n1 dot text okay so we get another error here a value of type string can't be assigned to a variable of type integer. Okay, so x is integer and that text or the content of the text field is we have a string. Okay, so therefore uh, it is incompatible. It is of incompatible type. So what we are going to do here is we are going to parse. No, not Yes, we are going to cast Okay, the text here into an integer because later on we are going to use them for our computation. So we have here int that parse. N N1 controller the text. Okay. So what we did here actually is we have converted the one inputted by the user into an integer so that later on we could use them for our computation is equal to int that parse oops then for the second number okay and to controller that text then next is we are going to <coughs> compute for the sum so we have our sum we have defined our sum above so we're just going to have it sum is equal to x plus y okay so take note here that we are just computing here the value of the x and y okay so as i'm going to save this one 
and reload. Okay. Let us say oh, 5 and 6 compute sum. Okay. So I click on the compute sum. So what we are actually expecting here is that it is going to display here 11. But it did not display. Okay. Why? But take note here. We have computed. We have updated the value for our sum. So therefore, the variable sum has been updated. And as you can see on our definition here, usually when a variable is updated, so we are going to use set state. Okay, why? Because when the variable has been updated, we are going to display it in our UI. Okay, so that it could be redrawn and updated on our screen. Okay? So that is why here I'm going to use the method set state. Okay? Set state, then I'm going to enclose this line here on within my set state method why because it is on this line that the value of the variable sum has been changed so it has been changed and then we tell flutter that a state has been changed and it should redraw our screen okay so as i'm going to save it here and reload actually you could see it you know as i reloaded it we could see it now the changes. So I'm going to have, let us say, uh, okay, 53 plus 6. Compute sum. So you could see it there, 59. It has been updated. Okay. So what updates this text is actually the set state. How it changes that? Take note here that our text. Okay. This is our text widget for the sum. It contains the sum as the string part or the data for the text widget and once we have changed the value of the sum we use the set state to tell flutter to update the screen or the ui okay so that's how are we going to use set state okay so in the coming videos there would be a lot more examples for the set state because set state is not only used for text but also with images and other widgets okay so that's all for today that's all for this video and i'll see you on the next one